So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? Ah, I see. Do you mind if I ask what you did? Oh, I... I'm sorry. I should not have brought it up. It must be an unhappy memory. You say that with such cold satisfaction that it frightens me. But I can see no fault in your actions. I would have done the same. It sickens and saddens me to hear what men in power inflict on those who they ought to serve and protect. I have heard stories that some Templars who hunt Maleficarum do not end the hunt with a clean death, that they subject the victim to countless abuses and indignities before they finish it. But this is just a rumor. Regardless of what happened in your past, I am glad you found a place with the Wardens, as I'm sure you are too. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus it is you who serves. Not they. A good king, a true king, who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. and the country suffers for it. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. Oh, I fell. For a moment there, I thought I was... I thought it was all over. I... I will explain everything when we are back at camp. Now is not the time. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. It's not a joke, I promise. Let me explain. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly but gently, as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life 
and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contains spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known, because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. Yes, that we will. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? Well, she's hardly discreet. The way she looks at you, it's as though she's completely forgotten there's anything of you above the waist. I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. She is a cunning woman, a Maleficar. She will use you for her own ends. I am telling you what I see and what my instincts tell me. And even if the feelings you share are genuine, this affair may not be the best thing for either of you. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? You may have to, to save one or both of you unnecessary anguish later on. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. <laughs> 